We are on the verge of the most profound industrial revolution in human history. That is pretty clear. You need to prepare for tremendous, tremendous change. And I don't say this with any sense of dread. I say this with a tremendous amount of excitement and pleasure. But if ChatGPT surprised you, just wait. The next decade is going to be the most marvelous and spectacular decade in human history. We are standing at the precipice of the most exciting accelerant to improving the human experience we've ever seen, and we're scared of what it might actually do. I get to now serve as a counter narrative to this prevailing sentiment that an AI powered future has to be dystopian or has to be apocalyptic. I've been in about 300 of the Fortune 1000 boardrooms. Everyone has the same question from my mom to the global leaders, which is what happens next. Are we gonna be okay? I've had the privilege of seeing the future and I'm here to tell you that it's not just gonna be okay, it's gonna be amazing. I hope that I can build a groundswell to turn the narrative, which is dystopian right now, into a much more positive one. And I ultimately just wanna be considered an AI optimist someone who believes that this could be the most incredible thing to ever happen to the human experience. OpenAI led many of us to think about what's next. To answer that question, please join me in welcoming AI futurist and former head of go-to-market for OpenAI, Zach Cass. First thing I'm gonna tell you is I think the future is abundant, definitionally abundant. I think that we will have plentiful energy, water, foodstuffs. I think it is basically certain that we will cure cancer and neurodegenerative diseases probably within the decade. And ultimately the argument here is that we are humans beginning an exponential journey together, which is really exciting. And we all need to prepare for this future in large part so that when it arrives, we don't reject it. But the reality is this technology is so new, the hard part isn't how to apply it, it's actually much bigger than that, which is why to apply it. And starting at the why is a lot of the work that I do today. Here's how you should prepare. First principle thinking has become existentially important. It is not sufficient to just say, hey, we'll automate it with AI. Now is actually a great time to look at all the things that are broken and ask yourself, why do we do this? Why do I do this thing? Is this actually what I wanna be working on? Is this process actually required? But underneath that, I think, is something so exciting, which is that most of the computational cruft, the bureaucracy that fills our lives, is about to go away. I think that humans are about to rediscover what it means to be human in a very profound way as a result of the time we get back in our day. The ultimate promise of AI, and I talk about this as much as I can, is that I think it actually allows us the opportunity to be more human and have more time. I think ultimately we will give up a lot of the things that we have filled our days with today that we think is our purpose, that we think serves us. And we will come to realize that what we actually want to be doing on this earth is spending time with family and friends, exploring the world, exploring our hobbies. And everything else we can sort of surrender to technology in a way that I think really lifts the human experience up. Because AI is actually probably going to commoditize skills and knowledge, you should prepare your life and design your life and work for the things that AI cannot do, which is optimizing for humanistic qualities and skills. There are immutable characteristics of being human that define us in ways that machines could never understand. Oh, he's outstanding. The positive message that what AI can do for us and not what AI will do to us. Zach did an excellent job. Genuine about the topic, very knowledgeable. We are humans and we are gonna harness this technology to improve our experiences, 
not the other way around. He believes so strongly in a future that is enabled by AI, and he wants to share that message with the world. It was great to see him deliver on all those expectations. And so in a future where AI is able to do a lot of your jobs similar to you, there is still a tremendous amount that it cannot do. AI does not have vision. AI does not have wisdom. AI does not have courage. AI does not have curiosity. This is what defines us. There's a future on the horizon in which humans don't have to work that much. One of my favorite questions to leave the audience with is, what would it mean for you to recapture time and to explore your identity as a parent, as a friend, as a hobbyist? What would your life look like if you could redesign your identity and your purpose around things other than your job. What's so important about the future is that we empower ourselves to use AI to improve the human experience such that AI makes us more human, not less. That we spend more time with friends and family. That we enjoy the things that we do because, not despite the fact that we do them. So much of what I do today is actually reimagining my life exactly how I want to live it in a future already now powered by AI, where I can spend more time with family and friends talking about the thing that matters most to me in this world, the abundant future.